um, I grew up in the Soviet Union. Uh, so I, I was introduced at early age to, to the duplicity of, of uh, real life and Soviet propaganda. And also as the chess prodigy, uh, a young star, I traveled abroad. Uh, first time I uh, visited France, I was 13. So it didn't take long for me to understand that there was a gap uh, uh, between the Soviet propaganda and uh, life in the free world. So, uh, um, and also uh, climbing at this chess ladder to the very top. So I had to uh, face many obstacles uh, uh, outside of uh, the game of chess itself. Uh, as um, um, half Armenian, half Jewish boy from Baku, from the south of the Soviet Union, I had to face a, a Russian champion, Anatoly Karpov. Great player, but also supported by, by, by the power of the system. And uh, so I learned about, about the injustice and about the uh, um, uh, way that you know, um, the, the oppressive systems worked. A uh, little bit of personal experience, but also I was um, a privy to um, uh, uh, books that could not be found in, in public libraries, thanks to my family education, my uh, uncle, the younger brother of my father, who tragically died when I was seven from leukemia, with my uncle Leonid, uh, uh, introduced me to Jewish intelligence. So that's why I, goes, I, I could also read and, and, and absorb this information. So by the time I became world champion at age 22, so I was already well um, uh, uh, armed ideologically to understand the shortcomings of the Soviet regime. And it didn't take long for me to join the nascent democratic movement, pro-democracy movement in the Soviet Union. Uh, during Gorbachev's reign in 1987-88. Um, and uh, I, will, I was very happy to see the collapse of uh, uh, the Berlin Wall and, and, and uh, the end of the Soviet Union. Uh, and I didn't think at the time that it would, uh, um, uh, there would be a moment uh, where my participation uh, would be required again. Uh, but seeing the, the, um, the, the, the change for worse as a Russia, my country, sliding back into the darkness. I, at one point, decided, you know, it, well, I had no choice, no other moral choice but to uh, follow the model of Soviet dissidents, do what you must and so be it. So in 2005, I stopped playing chess professionally and uh, I uh, um, formed um, an anti-Putin anti coalition. Um, and also, I, I, I was occasionally involved in, in, in various activities, uh, but since 2005, it became uh, uh, my full-time engagement, uh, and it's, it kept expanding. I'm chairman of Hugh Rice Foundation, for, uh, followed the footsteps of my, my late hero, Václav Havel. I also formed a Renew Democracy Initiative in America to uh, address the uh, challenges to democratic institutions in America and the free world, coming from the radicals on both sides of the political spectrum. Um, and now the World Liberty Congress, it somehow is this, it's, it's a culmination of many, many activities because I think that, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, it's, um, it's, it's a major step forward of bringing together people who have been fighting on their own, fight, you know, their, their fights often look as desperate fights, but no, no, no less a noble. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, I am very happy today just to see that, you know, some of these, some of these dreams being realized. And it's not just, you know, for me, Leopoldo Lopez, Maciel Jad, very prominent uh, 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 names in, in, in the world of human rights and democracy, but for people that are little known outside of their countries uh, to become part of the movement that I believe will, will, will uh, um, amplify uh, our um, global fight for freedom. I think one of the challenges that we are dealing with today is that uh, democracy is also in danger in the developed world, quote unquote. Uh, we understand that democratic institutions are no longer safe, even in the United States. Uh, the populism, whether it's coming from the far right or far left, uh, it's attacking the very foundation of the free world. Uh, the liberal democracy as, as a concept, uh, the institutions that guarantee the peaceful transition of power, uh, 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 
property rights, uh, market economy. So it's the it's all the things being challenged for, by various ideological factions that are just trying to undermine the pillars. Uh, of of uh, of of the free world and uh, um and i think it's it's it puts everything in 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 uh, um, in context uh it's not just freedom fighters in africa or middle east or asia or russia or venezuela fighting against their respective uh, uh uh, dictators, but also our experience could become a very valuable element of protecting democracy in the countries where people take this for granted, not understanding that you know it's uh, it's as Ronald Reagan once said, you know, democracy is never more than one generation away from extinction. So um, I see this fight as a global uh, uh, mm, mm, uh, um, concept, uh, which is probably normal at the, in the era of globalization. Uh, and uh, um, and I think that's the uh, war in Ukraine now. Uh, the it's the the uh, uh, the last phase of Russian invasion that 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 began um, on February 24th this year. Uh, because I always remind people that Putin attacked Ukraine eight years ago uh, by annexing Crimea and and inciting violence uh, in the eastern Ukraine. Um, so the, this this war uh, with all the atrocities uh, and uh, war crimes and genocide committed by by, by uh, Russian troops and uh, um, not even uh, um, hidden from from the world public. It's the first time we're watching genocide online and. Uh, uh, Putin's regime bragging about destroying Ukrainian, Ukrainian infrastructure and attacking civilians. You know, it's, I think it it's, was a final wake-up call for the free world. So that's we, we cannot pretend that uh, peaceful coexistence with uh, dictators and terrorists uh, um, could lead to the um, softening of these regimes. No, it's, uh, they are emboldened by our uh, passive uh, uh, stand, by our uh, complacency and uh, unwillingness to confront them uh, when we see that the danger is is uh, clear and present. So um, I'm somewhat optimistic that uh, Ukrainian war will uh, change the tide. It's the it's the moment in history where the victory for for one heroic nation, uh, led by by by. Uh, mm, mm, a uh, phenomenal leader, uh, uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, uh, this victory, final victory of Ukrainians against Russian aggression and liberation of their country could signal freedom fighters all over the world that the time has come for us to change this tide. And also it will um, uh, uh, make all dictators tremble because they'll understand that even one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful of them, uh, suffered a defeat. And had to had to retreat and 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 uh, failed to subdue people uh, because he and every other dictator in the past underestimated the will of free people. So um, it's it, it's it will send this the, like spiritual signal. It's uh, there will be wind of uh, freedom blowing uh, 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 um, ar around the globe, and we're already seeing uh, um, the first. The first uh, um, result in the round. I think it's this, this, the somehow it's the uh, uh, Ukrainian Ukrainian successes on the battlefield, and their their resilience and heroism um, empowered people in Iran to also um, take 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 uh, uh, or to make their choice and to fill the streets and to oppose regime that shows no no restraint in in attacking and even killing civilians. I don't think we can take opinion polls seriously. Uh, it's a dictatorship, and people just want to be want to comply with with with, with the questions being asked. Just they don't want any trouble. But having said that, it's it's still tragic to see that uh, many Russians they they are not willing to challenge the regime. Uh, I can only say that you know in 1944, 1945, Germans fought against Allied troops to the last bunker. And Hitler was in power for less than 12 years. Uh, Putin is in power for 22 years. 22 years of modern propaganda. Uh, it's it's tough. It's uh, 
the way Russia, I hope, will make its transit to democracy, it's what I call democracy by default, recognizing that uh, democracy is the only option to survive. Uh, if you have a choice between turning country into a Chinese colony or having a chance, a chance to uh, rejoin a uh, 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 family of civilized nations, I think this, this, this choice is obvious. Uh, but we yet yet to reach the point. And uh, that's why you know, we have to see Ukraine winning the war decisively. We have to see political will in the free world to, to, to support Ukraine, to, to reach this goal, to liberate the country. Because the whole liberation of Ukraine, including Crimea and the city of Sevastopol, uh, it's, uh, it's a precondition for liberation of Russia from Putin's fascism. Um, I think it's, ter it's, it's, it's terrible news that uh, the country that uh, uh, since um, the end of apartheid uh, was uh, um, one of the symbols of democracy uh, in, in, in Africa, uh, the lighthouse uh, for democracy, uh, the country that could uh, offer a model of coexistence uh, of different races, and, uh, and a country that had tremendous resources um, and uh, every opportunity in the world uh, to uh, uh, join the club of global leaders and definitely to drag African continent in the right, the right direction. And now is, is my, my, it's, um, it's um, uh, uh, torn apart by corruption, by uh, also by, by the lack of the, of, of the vision of, of, of its historic role and, uh, and the position taken by the South African government towards war in Ukraine and uh, uh, support of Russia, even if it's not direct, this indirect, uh, and definitely an uh, unwillingness to, to uh, condemn genocide and war crimes. That's bad news. Um, unfortunately, it's not just you know South Africa. You, you look around the world, and this is it's the other countries like BRICS countries like Brazil. So you had uh, outgoing President Bolsonaro uh, uh, being, mm, let's say, cautious on on on, on condemning Russia and, and and trying to actually being silent. And uh, President Lulu, the, the, this, this incoming president, actually, this, this, the, who came back to power, uh, blaming Ukrainians as much as Russians for the war, which is, means you know, supporting, supporting Putin. So um, it's, it's bad news. Um, uh, and I'm, I have some very fond memories of South Africa. I visited your country many times. Uh, we had programs to... Um, uh, promote chess as an educational tool. So I had Kasparov Chess Foundation, one of the branches in South Africa. We're still functioning, but at a very, very low, low level. But um, but there was a period, you know, from 2011 to 2014, where I just was a regular guest. So I was in Joburg many, many times. I was in in, in Cape Town once, with Pretoria. Uh, uh, in, I was in Port Elizabeth. And there's a big chess event. So, uh, so I know a bit about the country. So I, I actually I traveled across Africa. I was on chess tour, so I think I visited uh, 20, 20 plus countries, African countries. So it's the, again, very short visits, most of the countries, but uh, I, um, I remember that it's at that time, 2013, 2014, there was the, it was a better mood. I think there, there were big expectations. And it's, it's, it's very sad to, to see that many of these expectations, they, um, they never materialized and it very, vibrant energy of the continent, now it's very often being wasted. Look, I, I'm more than happy to go back, but it's the now, as you understand, so while I, I don't have bodyguards, whether I go uh, uh, around uh, in Manhattan or in, in European countries, but I have to be very cautious selecting uh, countries that I visit. Even in Europe, I, I, I still have, you know, I still have to be very selective. For instance, I wouldn't go to Hungary now these days. So I have to avoid countries where um, um, Putin's regime has, has a free hand. And unfortunately, today, South Africa has 
probably every other African nation, offers too many opportunities for Russian intelligence to conduct their, their covert operations.